Hey guys, so welcome back, and this is going to be tutorial 8, video 6 for the space shooter. So where we left off is now you can use the space bar to shoot, and you can move your cube back and forth. But what you'll notice is that the prefab that we set is in one position. So the result we want is what I'm about to show you here. So let's go ahead and hit play, and this is what we want. You'll notice that I can move, and I can shoot with it and it follows me exactly what I want. So let's go ahead and figure out how we can do this. And of course we can still wrap. So go ahead and open up your player script here. And let's look and see what we have. So starting with what you should have is, and you'll notice I deleted the code so you, there's no cheating. Um, what you should have is an instantiate method. And we agreed that instantiate is how we project prefabs. It's how we initialize prefabs. So we have our instantiate and then we have our game object which is our projectile prefab. And that's right here. And this is where we left off. So if I go ahead and save that, I should be exactly where you guys are. Okay. So this is where you have. Now, Let's talk about what we want to do. So go ahead and in your player script. So we want to, basically we have this, but we want it to do more. Um, we want our prefab to launch wherever our player is when we hit the space bar. So how do we do this? So for starters, what do we need to do? We need to set position for laser, right? So right here I noted we have to set a position for a laser, and then what after that, what do we still want to do? We want to, when we hit the space bar, we want to fire the projectile. So we already know that but that firing the projectile is going to be instantiate projectile fab. So we're good there, but we need a position for the laser. So how do we do this? Now, this is where I'm not going to spoon feed you. If you remember in the previous tutorials, we talked about what a position is. And if you remember correctly, um, and I'm not going to give you the answer here, I said that think of blank as a position, that's all it is, it's just a position. So what we need to do here is pretty much create a new variable and it's got to be a position variable. So based off of what we know of what a position is, how do you think we'd create that variable? So what you need to do is you need to create that variable and you're going to name that variable position. Okay, so you're going to have variable name, I'm not going to tell you, you're going to figure it out on your own. Think of past videos of what I said blank is a, is a position, okay? That's all it is. It's a position on either the Y, X, or Z axis. So what you're going to do is you're going to name that variable position or whatever you want. doesn't matter. I'm going to name it position, okay? And this isn't what you have to do. You still need your, your variable name here, the type of variable, which I'm not going to tell you. So you need to put your position variable there and we're going to name it position and then we're going to set it equal to a position okay so we're going to set it equal to a new position and what's a new position a new position is just a vector 3 and that should give you guys a hint on what our variable type needs to be okay a vector 3 a new vector 3 is going to give us a new position so what we want to do is we want to take a new vector 3 which is a new position and then we want to make it follow our player. So how do you think we have to do that? Let's go ahead and just look at what we have. We need to, okay, so our options are float x, a float y, and a float z. So let's go ahead and actually guys, if you notice when you do parentheses it says here one of two vector three float x, float y, float z. Well, we also can just do float x, float y. It's not really going to make a difference, but for, you know, for relativity we're going to use float x, float y, and float z. So what you want to do is you want to make its x value, you want it to appear where a player is, and then you want its y value to appear where a player is, and then you want its z value to appear where a player is. So let's go ahead and break it down. What do we have? Our player is what? Our player is the cube, and what's the cube? It's a game object. And what did we talk about? What are game objects? So you should know how to do that. So you want to write game object, right? You want to write whatever the game object is. Don't actually write game objects. I told you what a game object is, so you're going to write game object, okay, you're going to write out your game object, and then you're going to write its position, and then you're also going to write, and then you're going to type 
dot x because all all it does all this means is that the position of the current object is going to be what it is in Unity currently. And I'm actually going to give you guys the first one for free. So you have vector three, and then our game object. We talked about game objects. A game object is a transform. So you would do my transform because we have it cached dot position and dot x. Now all that says is that wherever it is currently in Unity, that's where it's going to be. So for instance, look at my player. It's currently at negative three for x. And if you go back into Monov, that says that game object dot position negative three. And during gameplay, if it, if it moves to negative five or positive five, that just means that it's going to continue. It's going to continue to update and be wherever it, the x is currently. So there's no need for us to fill in a physical value. Dot position dot x. All it is is the current value of where the game object is in Unity. So now we want we know so we want the variable position to equal a new position and we want to be on our x, y, and z of our player. So what we would do is my transform dot position dot x and then we also need it for y. So you would do the same thing, your game object, and then your dot in position of your y axis, and then get the position of your z axis as well. Okay? And then you would close it and you would put a semicolon to let it know we're done. So now, if we just save this, we're not done. And the reason being is, and I'm hoping by now, guys, you figured out what this should be. This should be vector 3. Okay, and the reason is, is because it's a position. We need to create a position for the projectile. And then what are positions? Positions are vector 3s. Okay, vector 3 is just a position. So we have vector 3, and I named it position. You can actually name this whatever you want. It's just common. It's just relevant to name it position. And then we're going to make a new position. And we want to be the we want it to be the position of our player cube, of our player object. And here you'll notice that we say my transform, which is current game object, which is the script we're in, which is our player class, and our player class is connected to the cube. That's why we're using my transform. So my transform is equal to the player script. If we wanted to use, say, uh, if we weren't in, say, say we wanted to take a sec, like for example, say we wanted to take the position of 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 the x from the projectile file, we wouldn't name it my transform. My transform is specifically for the game object of whatever script we're in. So we have our position, we have a new position, and we're setting our new position equal to uh, the transform.position.x of the player, the y of the player, and the z of the player. So we're not done here. How do we make it to where we can add it to our player? Or make it, make it, uh, make it work? Because if you just save this, guys, you'll notice it's not going to work. Because we haven't, we haven't told it to do anything. That's just a variable we created. So I still have this problem where it's there. So go ahead and close it out. Open up your player. And let's look at this. We know that this is going to be what projects are. Uh, this is no, we know that this is going to be what ig ignites our prefab. So how do we add to this to where it's going to make it fall into position? So we named it position. We named the variable position. And if you look up here, We've used this before. We have vector three dot right, and then we named a variable called player speed and gave it a value. My value is five, and you'll see here we multiplied that value so that we have right going the speed of five. And I got a uh, I got a message from someone asking about why we use multiplication, how to reference it, and how to use it and know when to. And the best example I can give you guys is don't think of multiplication as multiply. Don't say vector 3 dot right multiplied by player speed because when you think about it that doesn't make sense so the way I would look at it is look at vector 3 dot right as going left right up and down on the arrow keys and think of it as a car okay so you have your vector 3 dot right which is driving right you're driving left and right and then your player speed is say 5 or 50 so we're gonna say 50 miles per hour is our player speed and then vector 3 dot right is allowing us to drive that's a variable that's built into Unity and it's allowing us to drive. And then here, we have our player speed of 50 miles per hour. So when we multiply them, don't say multiply. What this really says is driving while, okay, while going 50 miles per hour. Okay, so what you're going to do is basically you're just 
it basically is just adding it to make it go at the same time, okay? Because the reason why we don't put a plus sign is because look. Does it sound right to say driving and going 50 miles per hour? Or are you driving while going 50 miles per hour? Okay, it just fits better. So we did this as an example up here. So what happens if we come down to projectile fab? So we want it to do what? We want it to launch our projectile when we hit space while doing what? While following our player position. And we set a new position right here. So what you should do is fire the projectile while following the position of the player. Go ahead and type in position there. And then let's go ahead and save it and see what happens. And we have some errors. Give me a second. Hmm. Times position. Hold on, guys. Let me figure out what's wrong. Oh, I apologize, guys. I did not read the rules of instantiate. So you can't do that, actually. Give me a second. Let me show you. So here's what we have. We have option, object instantiate, and then we have our object original, which is prefab, and then we have here, object instantiate, vector 3 position, and then a quaternion, a quaternion rotation. Okay, and I didn't explain that, I apologize. So when you, what we need to do here is we have our object original, which is our project, our projectile. Then we have a vector 3 position, which is a new position that we need to create. And we already have a position, so let's go ahead and put our prefab, which is object original, which is our projectile fab, and then a vector 3 position, which we named position. And then it wants a quaternion rotation. So what's a quaternion? Well, let's go ahead and open up our reference manual here. Um, go ahead and go to scene view. Open up your reference manual. Let's look up quaternion. Okay, so quaternion. All right, and what does it say in our thing here? It wants us to do what? Quaternion rotation. Okay, so let's go ahead and quaternion rotation. Does anything say anything about quaternion rotation here? Okay, here, quaternions are used to represent rotation. So let's go ahead and click on that. Uh, they're, they're compact, don't suffer from glimmer lock, and can easily be interpolated. Unity internally uses quaternions to represent over rotations. Okay, so we know what we have to use a quaternion. It's our quaternions are basically just rotations. But what do we want? It says quaternion quaternion rotation. How do we know what we need to do with a quaternion? Let's go ahead and find here. Anything that says quaternion rotation. Create the rotation with specify forward and upward? No. Okay, these all require that you do some type of operator with the rotation. That's not really what we want here, because our object doesn't have a rotation. If you notice, if you look at your uh, Unity here, and look at the player script, our rotation is set to zero. So what do we do if our rotation is set to zero? Let's go ahead and try and figure it out. Um, let's see, to string, no. Set lo look location, it's a rotation, no. The identity rotation. This quaternion respond, corresponds to no rotation object. Okay, so we have no rotation, so let's go check that out. Um, the identity rotation, the quaternion corresponds to no rotation, is perfectly aligned with the world or parent access. So what this means, guys, is let's go ahead and open up the C sharp. And as you'll see, so what this is saying is that the rotation is uh, quaternion.identity. What this says is that there is no rotation. Rotation is set to zero. So let's go ahead and try that. Quaternion.identity. Quaternion.identity. And then let's go ahead and close that up. And let's see what happens. 
Go to Unity. And now you'll notice that your bullet is following. But now, if you look at the first 20 seconds of the video where I demonstrate what you'll be doing, if you notice, it's not exactly doing what mine's doing. It seems like our cube is, or it seems like our projectile is centered in the middle of our cube and it's not really working as fluently as we'd like. And here's why. So our player at the starting position is set to negative three, negative three, and negative one. Well, so is our prefab. If you look at our projectile fab, you go into the script, do we have a starting position for this? We do not. <laughs> but our, our projectile fab, from when we created it, okay, it's stuck with, actually, we should have it. Give me just a second, guys. Here, put, go ahead and put your uh, projectile fab in there, in the hierarchy, and you'll see that our projectile fab has a transform of negative 3, negative 3, and negative 1. Now, there are two simple ways to do this. You can do it the simple way by just adjusting your, your z-axis, I'm sorry, not your z-axis, your y-axis, because it's right now in the center, so if we just adjust our y-axis to say 1, or negative 1, just kidding, 0, <laughs> okay, negative 2, okay, uh, so negative 3, so maybe negative 2, look, it's right at the tip there. So that means that it's going to be more fluent in the box. It won't, it won't be shooting to the side of the box. Now we can do that and just save it, or we can do it through code. I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and set y back to negative 3. Okay, you can go ahead and remove this. You can go ahead and delete it again. Go ahead and open up your player profile. Now, what we want to do is we want to take the y position of our new position and we want it to go to what? What we did in the inspector view was we put it to negative 2 for y and that's basically going to put it right above the box so if we wanted to do this through code what would we do? We know that it's stationed at negative 3 for y right now but we want it to be negative 2 so there's no technically easy way to do that but say we were Let's just figure out how we would do it. So what we have here is a my y, and we want to take the current y and we want to put it to two. So could we do my y minus say? Uh, I'm sorry, not minus. We're negatives. Negative three. We want to be negative two. Say plus one. What if we did that? That gives it to us maybe two, right? Let's go ahead and try that. Go ahead and save that. See if that looks any better. How does that look, guys? Did that work? That did. And I hope that I hope this video has given you a brief example and definition of understanding the difference between multiply, multiplying variables and how to use the addition and subtract in variables. So in a later vi video, we'll go in more depth on the multiplication asterisks and the plus and minus signs. Thanks for watching.